This man put on a clown costume, and now he can't get it off. Creepy, isn't it? After watching recap of the clown, will be even scarier. <coughs> Little Jack has a birthday coming up, and most of all he loves clowns. His parents, Kent and Meg know this well, so they decorate absolutely everything with clowns. While birthday cooking, Jack's mother confesses to her friend that she is pregnant with her second child. Alas, Kent is late for the party. He works as a realtor, and runs a bunch of errands all the time. Meg complains to her husband that the clown animator can't make it to Jack's birthday party. The boy will be very upset. By chance, Kent finds a very old clown costume in one of the houses for sale. He wears a costume to make his son happy. Jack is overjoyed, birthday party was great. In the evening, tired boy falls asleep on the floor and Kent is very pleased with himself. Meg goes to take a shower, and asks her husband to take off his costume to get a pleasant gift from her. But the man is also very tired, and falls asleep on the sofa, without even washing off his makeup. Next morning Kent takes his son to school like this, and then goes to work. By what causes surprise and laughter of his colleagues. He finally washes off some of the brightly colored makeup. But here's the problem. The clown wig is literally glued to his head, the same goes for his false nose. It's like the nose is glued to Kent's face. The man can't take off his costume either. Kent tries to cut him open and hurts his oh. arm. He takes a stronger instrument, and continues to try to get out of this strange clown suit. But this plan also does not work, the electric knife breaks, and the suit remains absolutely intact. Kent returns home and complains to his wife, that there's no way he can get rid of that damn wig, nose and suit. And he really needs to pee. Meg laughingly picks up the forceps, and tries to remove her husband's clown nose. Kent yells, and the woman yanks the instrument with all her might. This is a win. The red nose falls to the floor, and is immediately eaten by the dog. However, a wound remains on Kent's nose, and the man presses a tissue to his face. At that moment, Meg notices that there is no wig in his head, but his real hair, they're painted and curled for some reason. Kent goes to the hospital to get a bandage on his nose. The man realizes that something very strange is happening to him. Kent cuts off some of his colored hair and masks the rest of his white makeup with tonal cream. He decides to find the owner of the house where the clown costume was. But finds out he's passed away. And the man also notices that he has developed an increased interest in little kids. A little later, Kent heads to a store that sells Halloween merchandise. The salesgirl gives him the address of a man, who once sold the same clown costumes. The man immediately phones someone named Carlson, who then instructs our hero not to touch the clown costume under any circumstances. Kent admits that he is already wearing this costume and immediately heads to meet with Carlson. A man offers Kent tea and tells him a story about clowns. It turns out that initially, they were very creepy and scary creatures, that frightened children rather than made them laugh. Kent feels that he's getting sick, it looks like Carlson put something in his tea. That's right. While our hero lies bound and unconscious, Carlson sharpens a circular saw. Kent doesn't like this scenario very much. He pulls off the ropes and quickly gets to his feet. And then he attacks Carlson. The man finally explains to Kent that it is not a costume, but the hair and skin of a demon. Confused, Kent returns home and asks his wife to call the police. At this moment they have many guests, and they all look in surprise at the man in the form of a clown. Kent leads them to his car. A bound Carlson sits in the back seat. A man takes him to the police station. However, on the way, he notices that very strange things happen to his body. It's literally transforming before his eyes. Carlson manages to free himself, and throws himself at Kent. A fight at the wheel, usually does not lead to anything good, and the car of course gets into an accident. Carlson is seriously injured, and a scared Kent runs away. Meg arrives at the police station and reports his husband missing. Her father asks his daughter to move in with him for a while, as Kent is completely inadequate. In the middle of the night, our hero finds himself near a children's tourist camp. One of the boys is required to wash a dirty plate left by the fire. By a tree, the kid notices Kent. The man asks the boy to bring him some food. Kind guy hands him a bag of cookies, but it looks like his hand is tastier to Kent than a cookie. The boy runs off screaming into the woods. A new day comes. Meg studies the book Kent took from Carlson, and realizes that clowns aren't so funny and harmless. Our hero at this time notices new changes in his appearance, which makes him vomit in a public restroom. He shuts himself in one of the booths, and hears a group of kids come inside. One of the boys sees him and screams fearfully, causing Kent to immediately run away. Alas, as a clown the kids like him too much, and another boy, Robbie, approaches him in the street. Kent of the latter restrains himself from attacking him, and hides in one of the houses on sale. He screams desperately, wrapping his arms around his head. In the evening, Meg and Jack notice that their dog has been acting strangely since he ate the clown's nose. Kent calls his wife and says goodbye to her, and then tries to go to the to another universe with a gun. Colorful splatters appear on the wall, but the man himself survives. After he heads to the construction store for a circular saw, Meg sets out to find her husband in all the houses where he worked as a realtor. At the same time, 
Ken himself is building a device that would allow him to travel to another world. The circular saw should do it. However, a man lacks the courage to take this desperate step, and on the third attempt, he falls next to his homemade guillotine. At that moment, the very same boy Robbie walks into the house, and there is a very unpleasant surprise waiting for him. Kent is very upset, and at the same time, very hungry. Well, that's it. Soon Meg pulls up to the same house. Kent begs the woman not to open the door, and then she says she is pregnant. Having heard such news, the man opens the door and asks to be taken home. After, she hides her husband in the basement and chains him to a pipe, with metal chains. Kent pleads for no way to release him. Meg reads that creepy book about clowns again, hoping to find a way to save her husband. She sees information there about brothers, named Martin and Bert Carlson. It was Bert who had recently attacked her husband. The woman immediately arrives at the hospital to see Carlson, and begs for his help. The man grabs a piece of paper and writes, Do not trust your husband. After hearing nothing useful from Carlson, Meg goes to the very house where Kent found the ill-fated clown costume. There she finds a wheelchair for mental patients, and a video camera. The old footage shows a creepy clown looking like a demon. At this time, little Jack is teased by school bullies, and the boy runs home in hysterics. He hears his dad's voice from the basement and goes down to him. Jack complains to his father about school bullies, and Kent asks his son to bring him a bolt cutter. Oops, here we go. Meg returns home and finds a frightened Jack, but Kent is no longer here. He goes to deal with the school bullies. One of them, Colton, is playing a computer game at home, and notices the exit door is open. Kent is standing in the hallway. Now, it's up to him to play games. Later Meg sends Jack to stay with his grandfather. At home, a woman is suddenly attacked by her own dog. Turns out, after eating the clown's nose, the dog also turned into a demon. She is saved by Carlson, who shows up just in time with machete in hand. The man tells Meg the story of the cursed costume. He found it among the packages from Iceland, and wanted to wear it to cheer up the sick children at his brother's hospital. The demon captured him, but the curse was broken. To do this, his brother gave the clown five children from the hospital. Jack admits that dad went to see his high school bully, Colton. Meg drops her son off at his grandfather's house, and goes with Carlson to the boy's house. They're late, and they're not very happy about what they see inside. Meanwhile, Kent goes to a children's amusement park. Boys and girls have fun without knowing the danger they all face. Meg and Carlson get there too. A woman walks past amusement rides and slot machines. But Kent's nowhere to be found. Turns out the man is hiding in a giant children's maze. One of the boys climbs there to find his brother, but instead of his brother, there's an unpleasant surprise for him. Panic begins among the children, due to the red liquid on the slide. Everyone runs hysterically out of the park. Carlson and Meg look everywhere for the Kent and find him among the theater sets. The man looks truly horrible. Carlson attacks Kent, but the clown is much stronger. He knocks his rival to the ground and asks his wife to bring him another child. In return, the demon promises to return her husband. If she doesn't, the clown will come after her son, Jack. Meg rushes outside in terror. She's looking around to find some lost kid. One of the girls recognizes Meg and asks the woman for a ride home. Instead, Meg takes a schoolgirl to dinner, you know for who. They stop at some deserted place and the girl gets out of the car. Meg immediately closes the door, and the schoolgirl begins to cry in panic. The shadow of a clown appears behind her back. Unable to stand it, Meg opens the door and begs the girl to get back in the car. At that moment, a policeman appears on the road. The schoolgirl is saved, but Jack is in great danger. Grandpa brings his grandson back home, to have a serious talk with Kent about his behavior. Meg also comes home, and sees a clown attacking her father. The demon asks the woman to bring him another child. Meg grabs the hammer in her hands, and at that moment Jack comes down from the second floor. A real fight for survival begins between the clown and Meg. A clown with appetite reaches for her belly. Jack tries to run away, the clown goes after him. However, he is attacked from behind by a wounded Meg. After another fight, the woman ends up on the floor and Kent continues his search for Jack. However, he can't get the boy out of the locked closet. Then he breaks the wooden planks and is about to grab Jack. Meg throws a metal chain around the clown's neck with her last strength, and shackles him to the pipe again. She picks up the hammer and asks her son to close his eyes. One hard hit, and they are finally safe. Meg hugs her son and apologizes to him. What's left of the clown dissolves like acid. The remains of the wig, and clown costume are being collected from the morgue as evidence. If someone puts them on, you know what happens next.